Welcome once more to the YouTube channel where we're once again welcoming Bank of England Cricket Club. This time in a second 11 clash, another timed fixture meant an OH toss win was an early positive. Skipper Max Vivian electing to field in favourable conditions. Young Harry Ray is becoming a mainstay in the second 11 and was given the new ball alongside Elliot Morley. The B of E openers made hay though against them in the opening overs and kept the scoreboard ticking as they looked to set a target at Dean Road. Yogesh Patel's innings getting off to a fine start. Elmo would make the early breakthrough though Max Palmer out courtesy of a juggled catch in the second grabber from Max Vivian calls for a number of giggles among the neighbouring third level pals and myself Patel will continue to take it to the bowlers the first of Three boundaries shown here, a measured flowing drive through the covers. Followed by a slightly uppish cut shot. And then a more assured hook shot off the short ball of Elmo. The twos welcomed back Arjun Samra for his first game of the 2022 season, who put in a particularly mature bowling performance despite a recent lack of practice. It would be a run-out dismissal, however, to remove Rahul Jawar, a calamitous display of running between the wickets, leaving the aforementioned left hopeless and far from home. Another recent OH lever, Kieran Downer, entered the attack, playing just his fifth game in OH colours, and had a half-hearted shout for LBW turned down before more disastrous running would mean that the third Bank of England wicket would fall, this time Matthew Luddington for no score. He featured in the last video against our ones. With a score at 74 for 3, Owen Thornbury arrived at the crease, another player revisiting Dean Road after facing the first 11, and looked to turn his fortunes around after scoring just one last time out, here seen guiding Downer through the third man with ease. Max Bailey decided that off-breaks were the order of play today, and his second delivery went to the ropes as Yogesh Patel passed 50, a steady and necessary knock uh, for the away side. He looked to kick on after raising his bat for the second time this season, 14 innings, striking Samra well through mid-wicket. Club chairman Rich Brown entered the attack and succumbed to the same fate. Thornbury was clicking into gear and moving on at a considerable rate in an attempt to keep the scoreboard moving. Before Elmo was given his second spell and needed a second loosener. Not quite sure why Frogbox is saying that CMJ was flying in off 20 paces. Yeah! Elmo removed the dangerous Thornbury in the 38th with a back of a length delivery, which was willingly snaffled by Rosser behind the sticks. A much needed end to the 80 run partnership that was quickly gathering steam. Before Tobias Ross would meet the same fate as two of his teammates falling prey to a, an infamous Bailey run out for naught. Never run one on Dean's arm. Lesson learnt. And it seemed as though the wickets were now starting to tumble as Brownie got rid of Henry Warren attempting to heave over Cal Corner before even scoring a run, leaving Bank of England 158 for six. Yogesh Patel entered the 90s with this strike through the leg side off Elliot Morley. But those would be his last runs of the afternoon, swift glove work from Jack Ross as sending Patel back to the clubhouse. A fine knock and his top score for the season falling just short of his ton. Brownie then had his third, the very next delivery in the form of Kiraj Nayar, the otter with the mitts once more at first slip. With 55 overs left to be played in the day, Bank of England looked to up the rate and give the OH a real challenge in the chase. Aaron Crane survived the hat-trick ball and then set his sights on Hampton's cars. 
Harry Ray began his second spell and was sent for a maximum with his second delivery, this pair trying their best to ruin Harry's figures in the form of an over that went for 16 runs. Run rate surpassed fours and Wesley Johnson was joining in on the action as the B of E tail wagged, hitting Brownie down the ground for his third boundary as the away total passed 200. While Harry continued to receive the treatment. Before Johnson chipped a straight delivery straight to skipper Max at mid-wicket and his knock reached its conclusion, Harry Ray's 22nd wicket of the season. Viv watched this one well to pick up his fourth catch of the afternoon, meaning Brownie got his fourth for in his 23rd scalp of the season, Aaron Crane was left at the other end, stranded after a mighty fine cameo of 27 not out of 17 deliveries, with Bank of England finishing 214 all out, leaving the OH 49 overs to chase. Special mentions to Patel for his 90 score, as well as to Thornbury and Johnson for valuable contributions. Despite the three runouts, OH's fielding let them down towards the back end of the innings. Would they live to regret it? The chase got off to the worst possible start as Neil Lezieri missed a big away swinger from Aaron Crane who was making the most of the murky, windy overhead conditions. And the same happened to Jack Ross of the same over. A massive inside edge onto his leg stump, meaning he met his end. Max Vivian watching on helplessly from the other end as the carnage unfolded. Skipper Viv, who's averaging well above 40 this season, looked to steady things upon the arrival of Ollie George, Ben Jones, on the receiving end of a couple boundaries this over. And much to the relief of his teammates, OJ got off the mark for the season after four consecutive ducks with two boundaries and as many balls. Could this be the sign his fortunes were turning around? It seemed as such, Ollie starting to see the ball really well this over off the front and the back foot, as exemplified here. Unfortunately, this would not be the case for his fellow OH 2017 Lever, who nobly walked following this bottom edge off Crane's wily bowling. With the OH score now 25 for 3, the home camp was looking nervous, still 190 runs off the target. Oge continued to pick up boundaries regularly, punishing the bad balls from Aaron Crane. And from Ben Jones. Hands on heads would imply this one was slightly close for comfort, but still achieving the desired result as Ollie raced to 30 from just 27 balls. And this one looked even closer, worming its way between slip and gully for a second boundary. Finally, a more composed cut shot made it three and three. Chris Maddock-Jones got off the mark with a late cut down towards third man to move the partnership forward. While Henry Warne's bowling was looking rather erratic and Chris made sure to punish the balls that strayed onto his leg side. But unfortunately CMJ would meet his end in the 16th, falling prey to a Wesley Johnson delivery that appeared to dart back through the gate and clip the top of leg stump, a trademark Dean Road dismissal.
Bailey arrived at the crease at number six and struck his first boundary through the covers. Before this shot from Oge continued to keep his strike rate above 100. His half century would be reached in the 19th over as a result of this boundary, a marvellous return to form in very testing circumstances. Well batted, Ollie. To recover the form from his half century away at Streatham and Marlborough two weeks previously as he struck Johnson behind square here to progress into double figures. But this would not be the case as he completely missed Niraj Nayar's first delivery, completely misreading the bounce and attempting to dispatch the ball towards Hamworth. And it seemed as though OH were in dire straits as they found themselves 95 for 5 and Elmo would fall just two balls later despite hitting his first to the ropes. A wayward miscue swallowed by Owen Thorbury as OH's sixth fell. Nayar would then pick up his third and be the cause for OH collapse, acquiring the major breakthrough of Ollie George, who pulled the short ball and picked out the B of E fielder in the process. OH st still needed over 100, and the best bet would inevitably be an attempt to save the draw. So the responsibility fell on Brownie to stay at the crease and attempt to salvage some points, seen here striking Johnson well into the onside. Before Arjun Samra prodded a, a wider Johnson delivery straight to Matthew Ludington. Eight wickets down, Brownie sweeping well here. But it was one sweep too many as he top edged the very next ball sky high to meet his demise after scoring 16. With 19 overs still in the day, OH's last hope came in the form of youngsters Downer and Ray, the former taking 13 deliveries to get off the mark, but striking a fine boundary to do so. Keza looked confident at the crease, seeing the ball well, did the boys dare to dream. In short, no. Kieran picked out the mid-wicket fielder and the momentary resistance came to an end. A disappointing afternoon for the twos. No wonder Bailey begged Matt and me not to bother with the highlights. Congratulations to Bank of England for their mature display. On to next week.